Okay, I am here with Karen St. Germain, the director of the Earth Sciences Division here at NASA. Karen, how are you? I'm great. It's great to be with you today and happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day to you as well. Um, so obviously you work at NASA and when it comes to NASA, people, they think of astrophysics, they think of the space shuttle, the Apollo moon landings, but we're here chatting about our own planet on Earth Day. What might people not know about NASA's connection to Earth and the environment? Yeah, thanks. It's a, it's a great question. And of course, we all know that when we want to understand what's happening around us, we naturally go up. We'll go to the top floor of a building and look. We'll uh, climb a hill and look. Well, space is the ultimate high ground. It's, the, it's a great vantage point for looking back at our Earth, our home planet, and really understanding how it works. And of course, uh, NASA is our civil space agency that builds satellites. Um, and we have, there's a lot of synergy between uh, the instruments that we use to explore other planets and the instruments we use to explore our home planet. Absolutely. Now, it, it's no secret that climate change is one of the most pressing issues of our time. How is the work being done at NASA helping to combat the escalating issues related to climate change? Well, the key is to really understand. Right before you can take action, you have to understand. And, and so our vantage point in space, combined with the, the technologies, the instruments we can use to look back at our Earth in ways other than just, uh, just visibly. So we can see, uh, we can measure temperatures, we can measure changes in the gravitational field, we can measure changes in the elevation of, uh, of vegetation and ice and so forth. So it's that collection of observations that really allow us to understand how the various aspects of the Earth system, the oceans, the ice, the atmosphere, the land, and frankly, human communities are interacting. And that understanding allows us to model the Earth system, and modeling is what allows us to predict. And it's those predictions that can help us with, uh, with mitigation strategies, with planning, with adaption. So that's our role, is to inform those, those policies and those decisions. Absolutely. Now, I often hear the phrase, solving for space solves for Earth. Do you find this to be true in your work? Sure. Yeah, there's an awful lot of a connection between the techniques, the technologies, the, the approaches we take to exploring and our ability to understand our home planet. And, and that's, really, um, that's really at the heart of what we do. Absolutely. Now, tomorrow, uh, Friday, April 23rd, four astronauts are set to launch to the International Space Station from NASA's Kennedy Space Center uh, as part of SpaceX's Crew-2 mission. Uh, how is science being done on the space station and with missions like this supporting us back here on Earth and pushing these science efforts forward? The space station is a great platform for looking back at our, at our Earth, and we've got a suite of of instruments on board that are measuring all kinds of things. Um, one example is we have an instrument on, on the space station called EcoStress, and that can measure really tiny changes in the temperature of vegetation, which can tell us how stressed that vegetation is. It can tell us how efficiently it's using water to cool itself. So we can see from the space station stressed crops before they even look stressed to the eye uh, of someone standing right next to the field. We also, um, we also can measure, we have a, a system that measures the height of tree canopies, so we can, we can uh, understand how uh, the, the, the status of our forests, uh, and we, we can detect uh, carbon dioxide and its distribution in the atmosphere. Uh, and we even have an instrument that looks outward at the sun and measures the incoming energy, which is of course, the source of uh, the warming of our planet in the first place. Absolutely. I'm curious if there are any other specific experiments or upcoming missions that you are finding especially exciting this Earth Day. Yeah, we're, we are working on, uh, we're always building the next missions to fly on the space station or on their own, uh, on satellites themselves. And, uh, and one that I'm especially interested in 
coming up is uh, is called the Maya instrument. And the neat thing about Maya is it's looking at air quality and aerosols in the atmosphere, but it's a partner program with epidemiologists. So we're really trying to make the link between our, our air quality and human health. That's incredible. Um, so I, I just have one more question for you. Thank you again for, for taking the time to chat and celebrate with me this Earth Day. Uh, I'm curious, for people at home celebrating and looking to learn more and engage with their families, what do you think is most important for people at home to understand or start learning about when it comes to Earth, our environment, and climate change? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And, and NASA's got a lot of resources uh, that folks can use to really start to understand how the climate is changing. But I think the most important thing to really understand is the linkages between human communities and, and what humans are doing and how the Earth system is responding. And, and you can go to climate.nasa.gov to learn more about those relationships. And that's important because the more informed we are as citizens, the better choices we make about how we want our future to play out. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Karen. And again, happy Earth Day. Thank you. Happy Earth Day to you too.